This is Twit. We're talking, of course, about the uh, GameStop um, meme stock, basically. Uh, the subreddit Wall Street Bets about uh, deep effing value. The, <laughs> the investor <laughs> who took uh, like a $50,000 investment and turned it into $31 million. Uh, this has been a wild story. And I think by now, probably people have heard enough about the details of this. But I'll just do a quick summary so you understand what we're talking about. GameStop, which is, one would think, you know, on the, on the base, on the face of it, not the best, most valuable stock one could buy. Uh, they are those brick-and-mortar stores, mostly in malls, which are mostly defunct, selling physical games which no one is buying anymore because it's all gone to digital downloads. Even even our 18-year-old who really loved going to GameStop, it still does, I think he bought the physical copies so he could sell them as used and maybe get more games that way. But even he is recognizing it's downloadable for the future. So for a while, GameStop stock has been going down, down, down. There was this little thing that happened. Uh, an investor who has some street credibility, uh, bought a big stake in it, right? He bought, uh, I think, 10 or 11% of the stock, got on the board, and has been convincing them to go digital. And so maybe you could say, there's something that makes you think this stock maybe has more of a future. They've been through five CEOs in the last 12 months. <laughs> it's not, it's not a, a good picture. However, last fall... Uh, an investor named Deep Effing Value on uh, the Wall Street Bet subreddit on, on Reddit um, started pumping this stock up, saying, that, you know what, this is going to be good. Started to buy it. He bought, like I said, about $50,000 worth. Uh, others did it. It became now, the new term is a meme stock with people on Reddit, uh, people on Discord, on the Wall Street Bets Discord server, and other places selling it up to buy buy this stock buy this stock now because the stock was such a laggard it was heavily shorted by a lot of the big hedge funds like melvin capital billions of dollars and as soon as the stock price started going up and boy did it go up to the hundreds of dollars from you know from 30 bucks uh the shorts got squeezed these were people who took a bet that the stock was going to go down borrowed stock uh sold it expecting it to go down even more so they could buy it and repay the borrow. The problem is if the stock goes up, you're kind of caught with your shorts in a, in a bunch because uh, suddenly your, your interest is going up as the price is going up, and suddenly at some point you have, to, you have to get out of this position, and it ended up costing billions of dollars for a number of hedge funds. Uh, who got very angry. Robinhood, which is a... <laughs> yeah, understandably. Robinhood, which is a, a very popular app along with Webull and a few others that are designed to get what they call retail stock buyers, people like you and me, to buy stock because they don't charge a commission, um, was obviously a, a place to go to buy GameSpot stock for a lot of these people. But then Robinhood and the stock market as a whole halted trading which was seen by the little guys as protecting the big guys from the little guys' onslaught. And then, at some point, Robin Hood said, you can, you can only buy one share at a time. There were good reasons for that, which we could go into. But I think what's interesting about all of this, this ferment, and there are other stocks that are uh, also seeing some of this, AMC, the movie theater chain, also suffering, uh, but they, that became a meme stock. Um, and Nokia became a meme stock. So there's a number of these meme stocks. Um, let me start with you, Alex. Is meme stock, it's a little bit of a put down. Like, these people yeah. aren't real investors. This is just a meme. Is that a fair characterization? I don't think it's as pejorative as we might think on the surface. I think it's almost one of those um, negative things you kind of take on as a joke that you uh, then begin to enjoy yourself. So meme stock to me just describes the group of stocks that are trading uh, not based on fundamentals or long-term value, but based on kind of current market sentiment amongst the retail crowd. So and by AMC, the way, the sentiment may not be driven either by market fundamentals. It may be driven, and it seems to be somewhat driven by, let's screw the hedge funds, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of annoyance uh, amongst retail traders about their position in the market. If you have a lot of money, you have access to better information, better tools, and uh, faster trades. If you're a retail investor like you know us here, kind of regular folks, you don't. And so it feels like the market is a little bit uh, set up against you, and it is. And so what you're seeing here is a combination of greed – uh, social interest, kind of people banding together on the internet to bring something together, and also annoyance with the way things are set up. And I think a lot of people are still pretty peeved about uh, 2008, 2009, and how things kind of worked out there, and how people didn't go to jail, and how uh, we, the taxpayers, spent a lot of money to uh, keep these big banks alive. And so when these social traders on Reddit and other places notice that GameStop is shorted more than 100%, 140%. So I don't even know how that can happen. By the way, that's right. a failure of regulation. But the hedge funds have bought more GameStop stock than exists. And sold it short. And so people yeah. knew that if they took advantage of this, they could never the it up. make it good, right? There's not enough right. stock to buy. Right. How it's did been they one of the most know interesting that things. It, how did they know that it had been shorted 140%? Somebody must really, someone sophisticated uh, must have looked at that and figured it out. No. So, so Philip, the short interest is periodically available. Uh, before this show, I was Googling around a little bit, and you can find data on that. And with more sophisticated tooling like a Bloomberg terminal, you can definitely find out. But what's really interesting, and you raise <laughs> a good what, point. By is, the way, that's somewhat, some people characterize this as 4chan with a Bloomberg terminal. <laughs> Which is exactly that's what the, it is. <laughs> Which is exactly that's what it is. Well, but wait a minute. Now, I got to point out. And, and by the way, Elizabeth Warren, AOC, and others in Congress have called for an investigation. The S SEC, which moves like molasses, woke up late last week and went, oh, oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I got to point out, it is not obvious, you, you know, this, this is the superficial description of this. But it's completely possible that it wasn't just retail traders, that maybe other hedge funds were intentionally short-squeezing their competition we don't know exactly right. well, what's I think really once, going on here, do we? No, I mean, I think that what happened, you know, when the, the squeeze started and when you did have people like uh, like Roaring Kitty and, and some of the other big Wall Street Roaring Mets, Kitty is were, deep, a deep effing value. Yeah. It's, his, <laughs> it's his YouTube handle. It's, it's his we'll YouTube call him Roaring name, yeah. Kitty, Kitty from now on. That's probably more Right, yeah. So so when you have this guy who's, you know, turned a $50,000 investment into $31 million or whatever, and, and he's an actual, I mean, he's incredibly clever and incredibly smart. When you have people like him who made those moves, I do think that those were people who saw a, you know, a, a glitch, a hole in the system and were able to take advantage and then were able to propel this into other things. The thing is though, is that once the stock started rising and once everybody started kind of staring at it, like slack shod, what's happening and it went up and up and up, obviously you're going to have like non-retail in, um, investors who are interested in it too, right? Like, so I, I think that it becomes at that point, you know, people who are doing high frequency trading and who are trading based on, you know, having, you know, watch lists and algorithms and are doing all the, all the ways that, you know, most professionals trade now, which is not the way that retailers, retail investors um, uh, trade, we're obviously going to be getting in on it. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if, and this is usually not uncommon where some of the hedge funds will have a position to backstop against like their short position failing, right? So I don't think we know exactly what it is. I'd be very curious to hear Alex's thoughts, my thoughts, just based on what we know now and so much of it, we're still figuring out, as he said, the news cycle has moved so quick. But my, my gut tells me that while most of the interest has been led by retail um, investors, once things shifted past a certain point, then you did start to see traditional investors, whether they be hedge funds or, or you know, um, just uh, you know, high frequency traders or or whatever, starting to get in on the action too, which is only going to continue to to keep this frothy. Uh, and I mean, I look, I I expected the crash to have already happened. I was very clearly wrong on that. But I think this is one of those things where we're all expecting the inevitable crash. We don't know when the bottom's going to drop, but the the completely nutso thing about this is that we don't know how how high this is going to go until things presumably regulate themselves, assuming they do. And, and maybe this is one of those weird things where, where it won't. I think that GameStop as a company is in such a poor position that I don't see how it can continue to, you know, stay at these at these uh, levels. But yeah, to, to your point, I don't think it's it's definitely I think that it started and was largely led by retail investors. But if people are making money in this, like the game is rigged. 
it it is. I mean, I think anybody who's followed anything and has anything to do with finance understands and like accepts that you can't expect the billionaires to be sitting on the sidelines and seeing regular people making money and not wanting to to get in on some of the yeah. play too. I mean, it's just bizarre. Uh, Roaring Kitty, and this is what you do on Wall Street Bets. You post uh, pictures of your you know losses and your gains and so forth. Took to fit his he posted, and nobody can verify this, but he claims he invested fifty three thousand dollars, and at some point it reached forty eight million dollars. Whether he sold, I don't think, because I think he's saying hold, which I think Alex is nuts because isn't this bubble gonna pop at some point? Here's a picture of a kid, ten year old Jaden Carr, his mom. Gave him 10 shares in GameStop uh, in 2019 as a Kwanzaa present. <laughs> That's amazing. He's happy. Amazing. I love him. Love, love, love. She, I genuinely love that for him. She wanted to teach him about investing, but what lesson did Jaden learn, <laughs> really, <laughs> about investing? That's one of the concerns I have. I see people like my own son, naive investors, who say, oh, you know, I'm going to get me that uh, Robin Hood. And I'm going to put some money in here because this is a, a great opportunity. But but what do you think, Alex? Is the bubble about to burst? Is it? it what I guess it's not because more and more people are coming along saying I got to get in on this, right? Even though now yeah, yeah, yeah. you're buying Game Stock, Game Spot stock at like three hundred bucks. I don't know what the current price is, but three hundred and twenty-five. So yeah, that's it's, crazy, look, Leo. If this is the this is the year to date is... graph. It was it, it was it was yeah January fifth. It was seventeen dollars. It is now three hundred twenty five dollars. And there was yeah. a sell off uh, on Thursday. I'm sure there's some uh, market you know uh, market off market share uh, trading going on right now. It's insane. It's insane. So are people gonna? But don't you think people are gonna get hurt by this, Alex? Or no? Yeah, they are going to get hurt by it. I mean, we I know mean, the hedge funds got hurt. Melvin Capital had to go borrow money from Stephen Cohen. <laughs> yep. To the tune of several billion dollars. Yeah. So the billionaires bailed the out the billionaires. We didn't do it, which is super important to note. Uh, no one knows how long this can stay up because no one thought this was going to happen. And when you discuss people posting their trades on Wall Street Bets and other forums, what they're doing is sharing with a large crowd. And in, it's not like the old days where you had to go on CNBC to talk about your positions to get people to pay attention. Now you can kind of rally an army of individual traders who have access to things like options and more exotic investments than they didn't used to have. And so now you can really marshal a lot of buying power behind you. People are buying billboards and ads to encourage more people to buy and hold GameStop. Game, game Look at stop this. stock, which yeah. is a tongue hold, twister. That, you know, uh, uh, deep effing value posted, hold, 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 hold. Uh, of course he wants you to hold. He, in fact, he wants you to buy more because his value is going to go up. You have to, at some point, you have to start wondering about these people's motivations uh, and and maybe not buy into this. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, yes. And I don't think we fully know what's going on. Here's, but there's a large, to me, there's a larger thing at play here that actually ties into the events of the last few years. Um, this is essentially mob action, right? Have you ever, has anybody ever, I was in a mob when I was a kid. I was protesting against the Vietnam War with a big group of people. Uh, we did things that I would never have done by myself. You know, we blocked the freeway. We rocked police cars, stupid things that I would never have done. But when you get in a mob, you lose your mind and you start acting as a single brain in a mob. And we've seen this before. We saw it January 6th. Of, In a way, to me, what's happening in the stock market with GameStop is similar to what happened in the insurrection in the Capitol. Is similar to what happened, I guess you could say, in the Arab Spring. And again and again. What I think we're seeing is how social media, these messaging platforms like Telegram and Discord, WhatsApp, empower the formation of mobs. When I was a kid, you you only became a mob because everybody said, "Let's go down and protest the war in Vietnam on you know a certain day." And we all went, and that mob never got much bigger because there wasn't this mass medium. But social media has, in my mind, weaponized the mob. And while so, this seems benign to me, I you know this is great. I'm glad some hedge funds suffered. They should, but it that's today. Tomorrow it could be less benign. 
I, I think the comparison to the January 6th is a little bit tenuous because that was a rally that the leader of America had called people to show up to. So it was much more centralized than this sort of Reddit Discord well, I'm not making, type thing. I'm not making deep effing value equivalent to President Trump. but That's the point. But I'm saying that had President Trump not had Twitter and Facebook – had the, or, had the organizers not had these social media platforms, to me it looks like these social media platforms are ripe for this kind of thing. And this is what we're going to see. And I think we're going to see it a lot more often.